In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the mirror function in the 2D motion key editor for G1 and G2 characters. And I'm also going to be demonstrating the mirror and averaging tools for G3 characters in the G3 360 head creation tool. Hi there, I'm David Arundel, otherwise known as the Extraordinary Tourist and sometimes known as the Lazy Animator. And this video is a new semi-regular series that I'm starting where I answer your questions about Reillusion's Cartoon Animator. In this particular episode we're going to be looking at the mirror tool in the 2D motion key editor for G1 and G2 characters and I'm going to demonstrate how that works and then in the second part of the video I'm going to be looking at the G3 360 head creation tool and specifically be looking at the mirror and averaging tools uh, within the creator and demonstrating how those work. So let's get straight into it with the mirror tools in the 2D motion key editor for G1 and G2 characters. So on this demonstration we're going to be looking at the mirror function that appears in the 2D motion key editor for G1 and G2 characters and I'm just going to do a demonstration of how that works. On my screen here we've got a G2 character that is my avatar. It's basically a G2 character but it's got a morph based head but as this particular feature doesn't work with the head, it doesn't make any difference, it only works on the body. To get started we'll open up with the character selected, I'll open up the 2D motion key editor and you'll see for G1 and G2 characters this is quite different to the one that comes up for G3 characters. Got this weird uh, sort of pose thing that only works on full limbs and you get this weird gizmo rotation thing for moving arms and stuff around. Uh, the actual feature we're looking at is when you open up the transform section of this and this is the one that lets you adjust individual sprites and do things like resizing them and whatever. Put that back. You'll see up in the top menu here which is actually the trans these are the transform functions for the individual sprites but the icon here before I came to this section, if I go back to pose, you'll see this is the transform icon for the transform tool and that's what these numbers do. But as soon as you open up the transform tab, uh, this is the icon for making keyframes in the timeline. So anything you adjust here is going to put a keyframe in the timeline. But what we're looking at specifically is this mirror function here. And you'll see when I click that on, put a check mark in, we get this other setting called forward and reverse. Now all this does is affect how or what happens when you actually move these limbs. So uh, if I don't have mirror on, that's disabled and everything works as expected. If I just move the selected limb and that's pretty much what you would expect. But as soon as I turn mirror on and let's say uh, I select this limb and start adjusting you'll see other arm is now moving so this function only works on limbs that have an opposing side so you see if I select the leg and move this you'll see both legs are now moving but if I select something like torso mirroring is disabled because there is no nothing to mirror here there's only one torso this setting here forward or reverse basically what that does forward means that the limb the limb that is being mirrored moves in the same direction as the one that we're moving so you'll see when I move this arm the rotator up this way this arm here will also rotate that way so you, go, you see they're both rotating clockwise now anti-clockwise 
as I turn it back, if I change this to reverse, uh, this arm will go in the opposite direction and literally be mirrored. So I'll do this now and you see now it's mirroring the actual rotation that I'm doing. So that's pretty much all this setting does. If you need to do something where you want both arms or both legs or feet or whatever to be moving at the same rotation or you can also transform so you see I do transforms you see I'm making this longer the other one's going shorter because we've got the reverse thing set up undo that we'll set it forward now they're going at the same length but if you need to use that kind of effect when you're doing your keyframes so I was to put the timeline on and so we wanted to move to frame 20 and just have the character's arms stretch out at frame 20. Uh, that's putting a keyframe into the transform track here. You see right arm got a keyframe there and if we open up the 2D motion because that's all this is affecting doesn't affect 3d motion track you see on the transform track it's the main keyframe in there indicating that there's been a transform in that spot and it's actually the right arm that the transform has occurred in so now when i move the slider that's pretty much how this transform works i also wanted it that's going in the forward direction so this thing is turning the same way that i'm turning that that arm we wanted it to literally mirror, we can go reverse, and now when I turn that arm, the other one goes in the opposite direction, and if I shrink this, we'll see in reverse all kinds of things happening. Uh, interestingly, uh, this doesn't just affect this, once you've turned mirror on, if you go back to the pose section, you'll notice I can actually use these gizmos in the same way and use move two limbs at a time based on that setting so see there there's no way if I click anywhere else anytime I select an arm or a leg it'll always be on mirror you have to go back into transform to turn that off now I can select individual items again and this setting doesn't affect the deform settings so if I start trying to deform things uh, it's not mirrored here so that's basically how the mirror function works in the 2d motion key editor for g1 and g2 characters so hopefully that demonstration clarified the mirroring tool in the 2d motion key editor for g1 and g2 characters and its forward and reverse settings so let's get on to the next demonstration and that is using the mirror function and average function in the G3 360 head creator. So in this demonstration we're going to be looking at the G3 360 head creation setup tool and specifically we're going to be looking at the mirror and average functions and how you use them on individual sprites when you're setting up your 360 degree head. So on the screen now I've got this particular character which anyone who's got Cartoon Animator 4 will definitely be very familiar with. It's the Scrofer um, I believe it's a warthog a head character which is basically just a head attached to a single bone and we'll take that into the composer you can see there it's just got this one bone and then it's a talking head we'll select the head and open up uh, the 360 head creator and if we preview this just so you can see how it works animal character and it's got this sort of 3d looking snout on it quite impressive how this one's been set up so in order to demonstrate this like we're going to be looking at the mirror tool which is this one here that is grayed out at the moment and also the average tool which is this one just next to it uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this side here have the head positioned in that angle and I'm going to mess up the nose sprite so you can see uh, I've got the tip of the nose selected there 
and I'm just going to completely mess it up. You can see now if I go across and back, that sprite is completely messed up. Do a preview, see the nose getting bigger, sort of readjusting. So if I wanted to get that back without using undo, uh, because this angle is literally a mirror of that angle, we're going to use the mirror tool to fix that. We'll turn the preview off and so we want to get that back to how it was but without using undo we're going to use the mirror tool and it's just on that individual sprite so go to the opposite side and you can see the nose is exactly how we want it select the mirror tool and you see up on the side here we've got these mirror options that have come up and we can either mirror the selected object which in this case is the tip of the nose or we can mirror everything from this angle to the other angle. We're just going to do the selected item, so we'll leave that selected. And we've got a choice whether we want to mirror the transform, deform, sprite, or all of it. Uh, since all I really did was affected the transform aspect of this, I could just have transform selected. But since I didn't do anything with deform, it makes no difference as to whether deform is selected or not. So all we have to do is go apply and you'll see that's been mirrored from here to the opposite side and my nose is now back how it was. So if I preview that, you can see completely back how it was. So that's how that mirror function works for individual sprites. Turn the preview off. So that's how the mirror function works. Let's move on to the average tool. That's basically this tool here. And the way this works, I'm going to set this up, is what it's for is to help you uh, try and create uh, different sprites between certain points. So say I wanted to try and get what this tip of the nose on the pig should look like uh, at this angle down here, but I'm not sure how that should look there, but uh, I've already got it set up here and I like how it looks there. And I've got it set up down here and I like how it looks there. But let's say over here, uh, I haven't got it set up, so I'm gonna simulate that by sort of adjusting it so it still looks small and weird. Let's just pretend that that's what it looks like at the moment and I haven't done anything to it. Uh, so we've got it correct there at that angle. I'm liking how it looks at that angle. At this corner angle, I haven't set it up yet and I'm not entirely sure how it should look. Uh, you'll see if I preview this at the moment, I'm going to preview with that weird angle in the corner. And you'll see like between these two points, it's sort of growing into that shape. And at this point, it grows into that shape for that angle. So this is basically what averaging is doing. It's going to take how it looks at this point and how it looks at that point and create an average version of that and put it at this point. So what you would do is you select the average button with the angle selected that you want to fit. Uh, with the average button selected, you now select the two points at either side generally of the one you want to fit. Uh, you can actually select any two points. It doesn't have to be one at either side, uh, but this is the most obvious use of the average tool. So select this one, click on it, and you'll see it's gone black. All the rest are white. And then I'm going to click on this one, get the average of these two angles for the selected sprites. So I'll click on here and you'll see now we've gone back to this angle and that sprite has been changed to that average there and you'll see these other angles still the same. It's only this angle it's changed and if I preview that now you'll see that doesn't look too bad. It transfers between those two angles. So that's pretty much all the average tool does. Let's see if we go over here. Uh, this particular angle is actually originally mirrored from over here. But you can see if you look at it here, the snout is slightly different now because see there, uh, there's not as much of overhang of this red, dark red color as there is on this side. So it overhangs more, but it still looks pretty good. So that's what the average tool is for. Uh, I'll show you what happens if you don't do a side-by-side -side tool. So say we wanted this nose to look more like the averages between these two points. So we go back, select that, hit the average tool, and 
Now we could select this point, see that turns black, and then I select this point, and you see now the nose has been flipped, and it's the average of these two points here between those. Preview that, it'll probably look quite weird, because the nose is not even facing the right way, but that's how it works. Uh, we could put it back by doing average again. Uh, make sure the angle that you want to fix is selected and select your first point that you want to select. do the average of. Select your second one. The most common way of using this would be to use points at either side of the one that you're trying to fix. So that and you'll see the nose now goes back and looks quite good. So that, that's the average tool and that's how you would use it. So hopefully that demonstration helped you understand how the mirror and the averaging tools work in the G3 360 head creator. Both tools are actually quite useful and probably ones that if you know what you're doing with them you'll find yourself using quite a lot. Uh, I especially use the mirror tool all the time when I'm creating my own G3 360 heads. So that's it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions about Cartoon Animator, any features that you think would make for good demonstrations, uh, things that you're struggling with that I could do a short demonstration like I've done here today, uh, feel free to leave a comment or contact me through any of my sort of contact channels and I'll see what I can do in terms of putting together another demonstration along the lines of this video. So I'll leave it at that for now. Uh, until the next video, I'll see you later. Bye for now.